I'm just uh, calling this two steps forward, uh, one step back dance because I had written an article uh, with this title before and I will say what I mean by that. So the other thing that shows up as an individual action that one can take and there are people who uh, always talk about how they have reduced flying or uh, don't fly anymore and uh, they try to shame others. There is, it's very common now about uh, shame, uh, shaming people. Peer pressure works, but uh, what are the other uh, aspects of flying? I like flying. I like to be, uh, you know, flying from Mumbai to Patagonia and hiking around, coming back, maybe going and seeing uh, Vietnam or whatever, you know. Cultural exchanges, uh, learning, employment, and uh, you know, even for the future, do you really want children to uh, sit at home and worry about the end of the world because of climate change, or do you want them to fly around and see the world and uh, dream about building rockets to go to space, to Mars, and uh, beyond the solar system and so on. So we need a vision for the future. So simply avoiding flying uh, completely is not uh, healthy, I would say. That's my opinion. Flying is of course bad for the environment right now, but there are also times when you cannot avoid it. If I want to go back to the US for work, obviously I cannot m manage to go. I can take a ship, but that'll take forever and so on and so forth right so uh, no regret decision of course is to avoid flying when you can uh, take other modes of transportation that are much better like train uh, or a ship or ferry or uh, whatever bus and so on right so when you can do it but don't think that uh, avoiding flying is going to be the uh, absolute mandate for everybody it doesn't make any sense um, we already mentioned some ideas on electrifying uh, the uh, aviation industry and biofuels United Airlines has made announcements about going carbon neutral using biofuels and there may be someday solar powered planes and so on and so forth so let's hope that uh, flying will not become a uh, completely impossible because of the environment but we, but we that we will find ways to fly without degrading the environment uh, in uh, very bad ways make sustainable investments i already said this that you, you are not always in control of this so i don't even know how i would deal with this so the system has to become uh, sustainable uh, in terms of the corporations that we talked about that want to go green and carbon neutral and carbon negative. And there are also new uh, investments called uh, impact investments where the investment companies themselves, let's say from Wall Street, are taking care of the sustainability aspect and the uh, emissions reductions and carbon neutrality and so on for you. So that has to be uh, something that is offered as a choice in the future so that we can uh, just blindly uh, trust our retirement account managers to do sustainable investments. Uh, this is another way to think about, I mentioned Volkswagen before about emissions uh, cheating. Toyota, which has led on clean cars for a long time, came up with the first hybrid car Prius, which is so popular still and is a fantastic car. And it bet big on hydrogen fuel car cell cars and it's not worked out so well. But government subsidies, uh, subsidies are going very heavily towards electric vehicles and Toyota is actively uh, fighting against uh, electric vehicles and so on. So the auto giant bet on hydrogen power, but as the world moves towards electric, the company is fighting climate regulations in an apparent effort to buy time. So corporate profit motive can uh, come in the way of all the good intentions. There are many such examples uh, in the geopolitical arena as well. So this is an article from uh, Washington Post that talks about 
Germany portraying itself as a climate leader, but it's still raising villages for coal mines. So there is a nice long table of when the countries will phase out their last coal plant. So even the most progressive countries like Sweden, Denmark, Norway have coal plants that will run for a decade or two or even three before they completely phase out coal. And US, which has reduced its carbon emissions by moving to natural gas because it found a massive source uh, on its land, uh, exports coal. Australia exports coal. China and India have to import coal because they often don't even have the freedom of buying uh, uh, fossil fuel from Iran because Iran is under sanction from uh, the nuclear countries. Why? Because they don't want Iran to have nuclear weapons. So uh, how did they decide uh, Iran shouldn't have even though they have? Because Iran is considered a bad country by some standards that uh, the world community uh, uh, decides upon. So these are kind of complicated issues. Uh, get on your bike, but uh, again coming back to no regret decisions, get on your bike but be careful about safety, bike lanes, facilities to uh, park your bike, the time it takes to take a bike versus driving, the pollution you have to breathe along the way, uh, and protect our forests and plant more trees. There are, as I mentioned before, controversies about planting trees. It's not it's, If it's a zero-sum game where either you can plant a tree or you can do solar farms, then how do you choose? Plants do sequester carbon, but they can burn up in wildfires and release all that carbon back. And they do require resources like water. So where you plant what matters as well. Um, and make your voice heard. This is another no regret decision that I already mentioned. Peer pressure does work. Uh, for example, smoking has now become a stigma and you can ban smoking pretty much anywhere including in buildings, in your own apartments. You can be disallowed to smoke in restaurants, in a whole towns. Uh, smoking outside can become uh, uh, banned, p uh, prohibited now and so on. So uh, polluting maybe sometime, someday will become a uh, banned or a stigma as well. And there are human uh, characteristics which are known. So US Army nurses in uh, 1947, shifting social norms have driven the swift rise and demise of smoking in many places. So cultural memes, peer pressure, norms. So if you make a rule, uh, human be mind tends to internalize the norms and uh, avoid punishments. For example, if it is a rule that you should stop at a red light, even if it's the middle of the night and nobody is around, uh, most people would stop at the red light and wait for the green light, even though it's very safe to go. So that's kind of the internalization of uh, the norms. Um, as I said before, humans uh, don't have a very good sense of how much wealth is enough. For many people, wealth relative to others is more important than absolute spending power. So they don't uh, necessarily worry about how much money they have. They worry about who has more than them, then it can become a very different ball game. Plus, even a car, which is just a convenience to go from one place to another, uh, becomes a toy and many people like Jerry Seinfeld, Jay Leno, Salman Khan, they love collecting cars. Many of them have hundreds of cars and motorbikes and so on and so forth. There are surveys down, uh, done on income sa satiation. When do people think uh, their income is enough? Uh, the satiation points across region, gender and education. I won't go into details but it depends on where you live, uh, what kind of education you have, whether you are a man or a woman uh, and so on. So. Uh, needs and material desires are very uh, individualistic things, intrinsic, extrinsic values, but also there is a huge uh, cultural uh, uh, angle associated with it. Okay, So if uh, you are in the US, uh, not having uh, two cars per family may be seen as poverty, for example, whereas in India most families will not have cars, but this number obviously is increasing as well. Uh, Weather-wise, uh, you can uh, make sure your house is well insulated to keep the 
uh, air conditioned air inside or heat inside or keep the heat outside and so on. Uh, return on investments is a concern there. Energy efficient appliances, they can be expensive but uh, they tell you whether over the lifetime you will save more money than the extra you paid. Inflate your tires because the fossil fuel uh, efficiency is higher at a proper pressure. Change light bulbs, very useful. Walk when you can, again be careful, uh, safety etc. Time, uh, pollution. Have fewer children, we already talked about this, it's the consumption and not just the number of uh, children. So here, average per capita carbon emission in 2015, again, uh, we already talked about it many times, so I'm not going to go uh, more uh, into it. But uh, behavioral change, is it possible? It's a big, big question. Um, but one can imagine creating something like a 10 ton per person per year carbon uh, lifestyle for everybody in which case the top 1% have to uh, cut their uh, carbon emissions by 97% uh, to go from uh, 74 ton CO2 equivalent to what is allowed for everybody. The top 10% have to make a 91% cut so that the bottom 50% can enjoy a 300% increase in their fair share of the carbon. Is this going to happen? Well, I don't know. We have to see. Uh, also, there are no silver bullets. You have probably read about Sri Lanka's recent debacle with uh, uh, COVID, uh, loss of tourist dollars, and then organic farming uh, that was mandated uh, ended up creating massive financial uh, crisis and uh, so on. Okay, um, maybe I'll stop here and see what additional points I can make uh, before uh, I continue uh, this for too long. Okay, but you get the sense that there are a lot of things you can do. There are a lot of no regret decisions, but many times the carbon trap uh, uh, doesn't let you even know the total consequence of what you are doing, uh, like the things you are buying, etc. Okay.